Patrick Mahomes with a bum ankle. He practiced today. It looked like he was walking around fine, but I don't know, man. I'm legitimately thinking about fading him in this matchup. I think I'm going heavy, heavy bangles. Go with Kelsey, and maybe I, maybe I just fade fade Mahomes, man. Am I crazy? Am I crazy, Ellie? And that's the show. And that's the show. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome to the Edge DFS. My name is Tyson Smith, joined by Ellie Hernandez. Ellie, we already did the NFC Showdown show. Um, if you guys are interested in watching that, we'll throw a link up right now. Also, we'll throw a link up at the end. And then we're about to do our two-gamer here. Probably tomorrow night we'll get that done, post-Friday morning. Um, but for now, we're talking Bengals at Chiefs. And would you look at this, man? Bengals are favored by one point. What are your thoughts on that, man? I, I legit think the Bengals can win this game. And, and then I'm, I'm picking it right now. I'm, I'm saying Bengals win this 20, 28 to 21. Well, you know, uh, I'll throw my prediction out there with you. I think Kansas City is able to pull this out. Uh, I think they're going to win 17, 13. I think it's going to be a low scoring type fair. Um, but I could wow. also just be crazy as hell. Well, uh, you know, once this game, I, I think the original over under. Um, when it came to Kansas City's total was like 27. Now it's now it's dropped. I I, I believe it dropped down to 23 and a, uh, 23.25 here. So when you're looking at this man, I'm super surprised. Like yeah, I get that Patrick Mahomes is is hurt, but I would have thought that this was you know KC by two and a half or something. Uh, I know. Look, Joe Burrow, three and zero against against uh, Mahomes, beat him last year to go to the Super Bowl. I, I gotta take them again, man. So, what are your thoughts looking at this? This is this seems like very, very close. These teams are very, very close in a lot of stats a, a, that we were looking at today before we jumped on the show. So, what do you what are your thoughts? It's really not too surprising to me. Um, I, I do think that Cincinnati should be favored in this game, just with the, the question mark that we have with Pat Mahomes and his uh, high ankle sprain. Uh, but we've also seen a lot out of the Chiefs over the past four years since since Patrick Mahomes has been their quarterback and. Um, it, you, there's a lot of stats, the three, and no thing that you just brought up, but, uh, you know, they're only one of these guys has been a league MVP, a Super Bowl MVP and won a Super Bowl ring. So until, until like, uh, you know, Joe Burrow, or even Josh Allen or some of these other guys are able to do that. I, I do still trust, uh, Pat Mahomes and Andy Reid to, to pull this out. Uh, but with that being said, I think there's going to be some interesting money to be made on these bets. Um, I think minus one is a is a is a great uh bet to make uh yeah i think kansas city covering plus one is fine too but you probably just want to put money on the uh 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 money line at that point right there's no reason yeah. to bet covering plus one that means you're in the game so just yeah. uh if you're looking at throwing some of these bets down uh just keep an eye on these lines as we get closer to sunday because there's still a lot of question marks up in the air with uh Mahomes ankle man so vegas is putting a lot of money on cincinnati and if you can get Kansas City a plus money anytime, I, you know, I, I really don't mind it from a, just a pure betting perspective. Um, yeah, man, I hear you. Let's get into our injuries real quick here. Yeah, just pain. It was pain everywhere. So obviously Mahomes, he practiced today. Um, when I saw him at the, he, he walked into the uh, interview room there and he seemed fine. Like, I don't know if that's like smoke and mirrors, if they're trying to like, pretend that he's 100% fine, but that high ankle sprain, man, you, you talk to any of these athletes that had that injury, um, he's probably hurting right now, especially if he's out there practicing. I know that they got a lot of drugs. They got, they're drugging his ass up for sure. But I just, I mean, how effective can he be in this game? I mean, that's his game. Uh, I know he's a, he's a good pocket passer. He's got a strong arm. But, you know, he's he's best when he's out running around making plays. I don't see him being able to do a whole lot of that in this game, and maybe they're going to game plan around him not doing that at all. Um, so thoughts thoughts on Mahomes here uh, with that ankle. How, how concerned are you? And then talk about some of these other guys that that, that um, Casey has uh, as questionable. Yeah, um, obviously uh, Mahomes not being able to scramble around is going to be able to hurt him, but I think one of the things that's kind of going overlooked a little bit here uh, it's just uh, that scrambling is also to help uh, boost his offensive line, right? Um, we've seen it from it from uh, I, I think the Bengals actually put a decent amount of pressure on him last year. We've seen uh, we've seen the Chiefs 
get into issues when Patrick Mahomes is under pressure. So, um, you know, going back to that score of 17, 13, I think it, this is how you can muck up the game for, uh, for them by forcing him to stay in the pocket. But, um, Really, the, uh, the other interesting news that we got to keep uh, an eye on is McCall Hardman. Obviously, if he plays, we're going to probably be a little less deep at the wide receiver position. Um, and then uh, uh, Clyde, Clyde edwards Lair, uh I'm just going to call him Seth from now on, man. I don't even know why I tried to read that. Uh, Seth, if he is active, uh, back to, from the, the injured reserve, I think we do have an interesting scenario the backfield. Um, I could easily see Andy Reid having all four backs, including Ronald Jones and set and just rotating time to, to help take some of the pressure off of Pat Mahomes. Um, and then just one more thing that I don't want to uh, leave out. It, we saw the Bengals pretty short on offensive line on Sunday. Uh, they were able to overcome a lot of those struggles. But Kansas City does have pretty solid pass rush. They have like 90 plus sacks or something like that on the year. Um, maybe it's 80. But uh, I, I do expect them to be able to put a little bit more pressure on Joe Burrow as well. If you can put pressure on Joe Burrow, it is going to impact uh, what this team is able to do. If they have to sit back and shotgun, uh, I do think Steve Spagnuolo will be able to keep in, uh, uh, his defense engaged on uh, uh, the Bengals and help keep this game closer despite what's going on with Pat Mahomes. What it seemed like to me, um, I read Andy Andy Reid basically answering the question about you know who's going to come off of IR if Ceh is is ready, or also Jody Fortson can come off as well, the tight end there for Kansas City, and he basically said ah, probably one of them, probably going to be Fortson. Uh, so we might not even have to worry about Ceh in this game if he, if Ceh is active. I mean, what's his price? I mean, he's super low priced. Uh, he's a thousand bucks. I don't think I'm super interested, but this is the, this is the chiefs. Sometimes they do weird, wacky shit, like give Ronald Jones multiple goal line opportunities. Um, so who knows, but it doesn't look like he's going to be active. If Jody Fortson's active, he's 200 bucks, man. That's a, that's a guy that can catch a touchdown. I I might be interested in, in sprinkling him in. Uh, and like you mentioned, the Bengals have those two offensive linemen. What are they? Is it Kappa and Williams? Uh, those guys are questionable for yeah. this game as well. If they get them back, I mean, shit, that's you know, that's better. That's that's gonna be that's gonna help them out a lot. But they still got through that game last week without those guys. And how are they doing that? Well, they're Joe Burrow's getting the ball out of his hands quick. And I think that that's something that Mahomes is gonna have to try to do in this game. Um, he's not gonna be able to get away from that pass rush. Although the Bengals' pass rush isn't amazing. Um, if they find ways to put pressure on him, we've we've seen it. We saw Tom Brady. We saw the we saw the Bucks and Todd Bowles put pressure on 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 him in the Super Bowl, and he was completely shut down. Um, except for the only difference now is the dude can't run around the pocket. So, in my opinion, I feel like the the Bengals have a have a pretty big advantage in this game. And another thing that worries me with KC is, you know, they don't have that number one, that true number one wide receiver. They got Kelsey, but what if you if you shut down Kelsey? If you're the Bengals and you just go out and shut him down, who are they throwing the ball to? You know, like I know that Juju Smith-Schuster is on the field a lot. He's just not getting opportunities. MVS had two targets and one catch. I think this is another opportunity for Tony, Kadarius Tony. And I think this is another opportunity for a guy like even like Sky Moore. I know he doesn't get a ton of opportunities, but they may use those guys uh, to help in the run game with a couple dump passes and a couple screen passes. And also, you know, end around, hand the ball off to him. Anyways, I'm ranting here. But what are your thoughts on what I'm talking about here, man? It just doesn't feel like they're wide receivers. While all of them can catch touchdowns, it doesn't feel like they have that one reliable guy that Pat Mahomes can just throw the ball up to like like uh, Tyreek Hill was last year. Yeah, so I, I I think a good way to sum it up would be Tyreek Hill is, is uh, you know, they had a 1A, 1B. They had a safety valve uh, if one guy wasn't getting they needed. Um, the rest of this offense outside of Kelsey is so dependent on the success of Mahomes and what he's able to do. He extends plays. He can throw it behind his back and put it on a dime 40 yards up the field, right? Um, I, I think uh, that's going to limit uh, some of the upside that we have from some of these other players. Now, uh, to your point, I think getting a guy like Justin Watson, Sky Moore, the same, same bullshit that we talk about yeah. with the Chiefs all the time. Th- these are the upside guys that you can s- throw in the lineups just randomly. And then even with me, Cole Hardman back, like I think uh, those guys are going to even have even – further suppressed ownership so you know yeah. sky more at what what is he like 600 bucks man like i don't know maybe run him at, or 1200 or something 1200 yeah maybe justin watson's uh like 2200 like they're, they're still a, a little bit of expensive but 
you know, imagine one of those guys has a, a 60 yard touchdown. You have him in captain. Yeah. I, I'm not going to have a bunch of lineups doing that, but that, that's the kind of flexibility that you're going to need on the slate like this. Um, should Kelsey fail and Mahomes, you know, need to play hero ball somehow. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll mention this here in a minute, but Bengals are pretty damn good against those tight ends. I don't think it's going to, you're going to be able to completely shut down Kelsey, but if Kelsey is that expensive, and he gets you only 10 fantasy points or something, you, it's not good. Uh, your, your lineup's probably dead. Uh, let's get to our breakdown here. Break it down. All right, so like I had mentioned in the opener, I'm I'm really thinking about, uh, you know, if, if I don't uncheck Patrick Mahomes, which I'm not going to do, but I'm going to be under under the field on, with him. And I'll prop for my tournament lineups, and I'm probably I'll probably throw him at captain in my... Or, or at least in the flex in my like single entry or cash. And then I'll probably just not play as much of him in, in, in the flex. And the only reason I'm doing that, if it was easy to build and we had some great value that I trusted, I wouldn't be doing that. But building with Mahomes and Burrow and Kelsey, you're going to have to put like Kadarius Tony a captain or something. Like there's just not, you just can't get, you can't get guys like Jamar Chase. You can't get T Higgins. You can't do any of that. So that's the main reason why I'm thinking about, man, I might just, I might build without Patrick Mahomes. And as long as I got Kelsey, as long as I got, um, you know, Pacheco, I, I I might be able to slip through and hopefully I'll do okay. But it is scary. Don't get me wrong. But I've, I got to, there's got to be some strategy here to this. And sometimes bold moves help you. So uh, what are your thoughts on Mahomes here? Um, I know we keep talking about this, but hey, I mean, this is, this is the most important thing to talk about here. When they played earlier this year and lost... Uh, they lost 27 to 24 to Cincinnati. He had 20 fantasy points, nothing too crazy. He did have a rushing touchdown in that one, which kind of saved his total. Uh, so what do we do here, man? Are you thinking uh, are you thinking Burrow, Burrow and Mahomes together? Uh, I'm gonna have a little bit of it. I, I think you're back into one quarterback builds, um, which you know is something you got to keep in mind when you're you're hand building. Uh, if you're if you're naturally fading one quarterback, I think that's where a lot of the field is. So just make sure that you're getting different somewhere else. Um, but uh, look, I think the easiest way to approach the, the Mahomes situation is just keep an eye on where everybody else is. And uh, as we get closer to a lot, kind of let's pay attention to ownership projections and how they change. I really don't think um, anybody's going to be too concerned about him i still think he's going to be around 50 55 owned but if like we look on saturday and people are just uh really skeptical maybe he had bad news and he misses practice tomorrow or something um which they really shouldn't and it's all walkthroughs at this point but uh, and and patrick mahomes ends up uh, getting projected for 15 percent ownership then i'm gonna lock him in you know what i mean like i know you're thinking about yeah. baiting him but i just yeah. want to be very clear about that if for whatever reason people aren't playing patrick mahomes and you're getting leverage by playing him then I'll be playing a shitload of him. But right now, I'm, I'm still kind of leaning towards where you're at. I don't expect the field to fade him. And, uh, you know, it, you can get Travis Kelsey, who's probably going to be one of the higher scoring uh, uh, Kansas City players, even if he only gets nine or ten points, right? Again, that's probably indicative of the whole team sucking dick. So, <laughs> um, look, I mean, I think you can get what you need through Kelsey and maybe one of the running backs. I don't really have a, a, a take against it, but – uh, just keep an eye on ownership. If he's low owned, then I'm going to have a shitload of him, and I'll be playing him heavy at captain. Even the Chiefs' defense uh, gives up basically on average 20 fantasy points to quarterback to opposing quarterbacks. That's 31st in the NFL. Now that's standard scoring, but that doesn't really matter when it comes to um, wide receivers. The Chiefs' Chiefs' defense allow 28 fantasy points total to wide receivers. That's 24th in the NFL. That's non PPR. Uh, it just seems to me like this this pass defense for KC, while while their pass rush is pretty good, and that could affect Joe Burrow, um, it seems like to me, man, this is a prime spot for Joe Burrow to absolutely go off. I'm going to have him in probably most of my lineups. I'm probably doing something similar to that, locking his ass in, which allows, which is another reason why, you know, maybe I get a lot less Mahomes than, than I originally planned. Uh, and did you want to mention, uh, you, you know, I, I have a little bit of a bold take there. You you have another bold take here, Chad Henney. Yeah, um, so I, I do think he's in play. Uh, I It's very possible. This is a high ankle sprain. This is normally, uh, you know, uh, four to six, probably six to eight weeks if we're being realistic. Um, but it's potentially the last game of the season. So, uh, but there's, he could get hurt again on, on the first snap, right? Just get rolled up. 
uh, somebody jumps off sides and puts the center into him, um, there's a good chance that T Chad Henney could see some run. Uh, they could have special packages just for Chad Henney to get out there. And he has been serviceable when he's been in there. And in 8K, uh, if you think that there's any reason Patrick Mahomes could be limited, I don't mind uh, throwing a couple lineups with Chad in there. Uh, probably specific to 150 max, like if you're running a couple bullets into a 150 max, do it. I don't know if I'd even do it in a 20 max, but I, I, look, man, I I think that he's he's fine. Patrick Mahomes is a little bit more questionable than people are letting on. Yeah, and the last thing I'll say about this is if there's one position that could you know play with a high ankle sprain, probably the quarterback is probably that position. Um, you know, wide receivers, running backs, these dudes aren't coming out playing with a high ankle sprain. So I, he, I think he will play, but how how effective will he be? All right, running backs. Let's start with Cincinnati. Um, Joe Mixon, 9,800. Samaj P. Ryan, 4,600. So Mixon didn't do much last week. Uh, oh, yeah, actually he did. <laughs> uh, I don't know what I'm thinking there. 23 fantasy points, 100, 105 yards. He had 20 attempts. Not bad. Um, the week before that, I, that, that's where I got confused. Uh, eight fantasy points. So thoughts, thoughts on Joe Mixon here. What do we do with him if we're, you know, we're going to have to make decisions between T Higgins, Jamar chase, and a guy like Joe Mixon. If, if we're putting, um, if we're putting the quarterback in, in there in the flex. So what do we do here, man? And any, any interest in Samaj P run? Uh, I'll start with the second question. Cause that one's easy. Not really interested in Samaj. He's probably not going to get enough run. Um, I think he's fine in 4,600 if that's what you have left, but I'm not targeting him to any capacity. Uh, but Joe Mixon's interesting. Uh, his involvement in the past game has been increasing, um, and I like that. Uh, if he's going to get catches, um, if he's going to get targets, then that's something that we got to continue. I mean, he had three, four, five, nine in that week, six. Like That's, that's craziness to me. And uh, if they're getting him involved, man, that's what we need from a running back in PPR. And uh, at his price, like I think if we're already thinking about fading Mahomes, I think you can grab Kelsey Mixon, uh, uh, Burrow, and then one of his receivers, you know, uh, uh, Chase or Higgins, and still be pretty comfortable salary wise. So I, I think you need to add a little bit of Joe Mixon. Um, the Kansas City defense is not very effective against the run, and uh, you know. It, Handing the ball off is a great way to get a pass rush to over pursue, right? That's how you bust open big runs. Uh, if this Kansas City pass rush gets going, but it would get Chris Jones up on the front line, like that's going to be a really good way to to offset some of the impact that uh, a defensive line can have. So I do expect Joe Mixon to get involved pretty heavily. I think you need to be probably around 40% exposed to him if uh, you're uh, doing uh, MME. Now, we don't have ownership on this game yet available. Uh, are you seeing it on your side, on RG? Cause uh, let me see. I don't see it. No, they don't have anything up yeah. over here. Yeah, which is, you know, that's that's normal. Um, but at this point, just looking at his projection to his price, after crunching, you know, a couple hundred lineups, I barely get any Joe Mixon. Um, I don't get uh, much of any just, just with the basic settings. Now, that doesn't mean a lot because I'm going to try to get him involved. But what that says to me is maybe maybe his ownership is going to be a little bit lower than it should be, and if he's coming in like, what do you what do you think, thirty five percent ownership? If you had to guess, maybe eight percent at captain, that's a really nice number, and especially throwing him at captain with with his upside, um, you, you know he proved he proved last week he can come out and do it. He he had one touchdown, but he had 23, 23 fantasy points. Um, that's very interesting to me. And Samaj P Ryan at forty six hundred. I think most of my lineups are going to be four chiefs so i think i'm going to try to try to involve either one of these guys uh let's go to kc jerick mckinnon 6600 isaiah pacheco 6400 so look mckinnon 6600 we know he finally had a game that he didn't score a receiving touchdown um about time now does he go back to catching touchdowns i don't know but uh, to me, it feels like he's got to get more involved in a game like this where mahomes is going to have to get the ball out of his hands pretty quick um, but look, there's always that chance that, you know, he's very, he's very touchdown dependent. He's, you know, PPR is nice. You can get him, you know, he can get you six, seven fantasy points without scoring a touchdown, but he's got to score that touchdown. And at 6,600, I don't know that I'm going to want, want to, uh, you know, there's other options. I'd rather play Pacheco in a game like this at 6,400. So what do we do with these two running backs and any interest in a guy like Ronald Jones at 200 as just a dart throw? I don't give a shit about Jarek McKinnon. Um, I, I think you maybe get him at 
captain uh, if you're worried about him potentially going off. Because uh, if he does anything, it'll be like 12 yards and three touchdowns on four receptions. So uh, <laughs> fine, throw him at captain if you're worried. Uh, otherwise, I'm not going to be playing him. Uh, I like Isaiah Pacheco at 6,400. Uh, we saw some explosiveness out of him last week. Uh, and again, uh, having a physical running uh, game is going to benefit Patrick Mahomes uh, in, in his bum ankle. So uh, I, I I don't know, man. I think we're going to see a decent amount of Isaiah Pacheco. Uh, and and he's been doing pretty good. Like yeah. he, Five more yards and he gets the 100 the yard bonus there. And he didn't have a touchdown last week either, right? Well, uh, oh, yeah. We don't have 20. Wait a second. All right, so we we screwed this away. Is that right? Yeah, that is right. That is what that was last week, right? They played against Jacksonville. My mind is mush at this point. They played against Jacksonville last week, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they did. Oh my last god. Last Saturday. Okay. Anyways, yeah. I, yes. But look, I, I'm, sorry guys. So I, if he gets a touchdown, I mean, he's sitting there at 16, 17, 18 fantasy points, and that's exactly what we're looking for. Um, Jarek McKinnon, if he gets that touchdown, he's at eight. He's at nine. Like he just he he almost paid off his his price tag. So um, yeah, it's that's that's where I'm at. I like Isaiah Pacheco. I'm not going to get any McKinnon, and then uh, I don't mind Ronald Jones, two hundred bucks, uh, especially if uh, Say is inactive. Uh, then you know he could get another vulture on the goal line, and a uh, vulture touchdown uh, at two hundred bucks is enough to jam in everyone uh, with Ronald Jones. Look at this from Pacheco though. Um, he basically has at least nine point seven fantasy points every week since week 11. Uh, he's quietly very consistent. He's probably going to get you, you know, f- around 15 carries. If he gets you the touchdown, that's that's really what you're looking for from him. Wide receivers, Juju Smith-Schuster, 5,400. MVS, 3,600. Kadarius Tony 48. And then you got Justin Watson at 22. Sky Moore at 12. And Mecole Hardman, if he's active, he's 3,200. So Juju did not look very good last week. Um, he just didn't get involved. He's on the field a ton. He's on the field almost every play. 85% of the snaps he's in. But he just wasn't really getting – he's not really getting many targets. Two targets, 29 yards. The week before, two two targets. The week before that, three. So I, I just don't think you can really trust a guy like that. And we, we had talked about last week that, you know, if you're stacking Mahomes, you don't necessarily need to, to throw Juju in there with him because he was so expensive – you could go down and grab Kadarius Tony. You can go down and grab some of these other guys like Justin Watson. Um, I think it's the same situation. <clears throat> um, now, obviously, we need to wait until ownership comes out to really see if Juju's like twenty percent or something. Okay, now I'm thinking, all right, maybe maybe I'm 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 interested in him. But he if he's still popular just because he's the number one wide receiver on KC and, and you, you get some casuals coming in and playing for you know these these contests in the AFC championship, you know, his because he's known, his ownership might be inflated a little bit. And I'm not super interested in him if, if that's the case. So thoughts on these guys. I mean, Mahomes is throwing him the football. I know he's hurt, but he's still throwing these guys the football. Every one of these dudes is, is gonna be in my player pool, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think you don't really need more than one, probably no more than two, uh, for sure. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Juju, but any one of these guys could end up with a touchdown. Um, I expect everyone to get anywhere between two to three targets, uh, maybe a little bit more. Um, but again, they all need the touchdown to pay off. Uh, if I were going to rank these guys, I think Juju would probably be my, uh, top play and then uh uh, Kadarius Tony would be my second favorite wide receiver beyond that like even then I I'm not prioritizing Juju to any capacity right if I have 4,800 5,400 left over then I'll move these guys into the lineup otherwise I'm going to be looking at uh uh, you know getting exposure to even MVS at 3,600 right that's not terrible but Justin Watson at 2,200 and Sky Moore at 1,200 uh, I, you know, I want the guys that are going to get caught open, get up in the open field, uh, you know, splitting safeties with a potentially 50 yard uh, uh, catch with uh, room to run. So uh, that's what I'm looking for. Right. At twelve hundred dollars is going to pay off with six points uh, on one catch for 50 yards. Whereas if that happens to Juju, which is very possible, it happens. Uh, you're you're fucked. So, um, yeah, I, I think you go with some of these other guys. I like Watson and I like more. Well, MVS had 50% of the snaps. The interesting thing to me is Justin Watson had 56% of the snaps. So uh, it seems like Justin Watson's getting involved. We've seen him come up with big plays. It seems like Mahomes trusts him well enough to throw the ball down the field to him. 
Um, so, he, you know, at that price tag of 2200 I'm very interested in him. Now, if Mikko Hardman comes back, um, I, I don't think I'm going to get any Sky more. And I, I think a little bit of Justin Watson, I think that really hurts Watson. But we don't know how truly healthy Mikko Hardman is. He hasn't really been able to practice. He's been injured for most of the year. If he's active, I think it hurts some of these other ancillary wide receivers. Um, but generally speaking, I don't think that he really makes a huge impact at 3,200. I still think they utilize guys like Tony in that similar role um, a little bit more than than Miko Hardman. Do you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we still don't know uh, the, the hell situation on Hardman. Um, <clears throat> and Tony, I think, is a much more physical uh, present. So I, I, I just, I, I think Tony's going to continue to get the work that he had and Hardman is going to be worked in if anything, you know, if Tony, if they could finally give him more than like 30% of the snaps, like he's dangerous, he's still getting like 10 fantasy points a game in the last few weeks. And he had, he had one game where he, he did pretty damn good. He had 12, 10, 10 earlier in the year against Jacksonville. He had 19. Anyways, my point is he's not seeing a lot of the field, but because, you know, because you could see some quicker passes at, uh, from Mahomes. Um, Tony is the guy that gets, you know, usually would, would be uh, able to capitalize on those those quick plays. Uh, Cincinnati wide receivers, I'm interested in all these guys. Jamar Chase is 10.4K, T. Higgins 8,400, Tyler Boyd 5K, and uh, Trenton Irwin 2,800. So Jamar Chase seems like just at this point, I know he's expensive, but he is such such an obvious play at this point. He's His targets have been, since he came back from injury, I mean, look at this, 8, 12, 13, 11, 13, 15. I mean, absolutely crushing it. And, I like, T. Higgins is a great option, obviously, but I think this is far and away the guy that you want to focus on here for these wide receivers. T. Higgins at 8,400, he's a little expensive, to be honest. I mean, he hasn't really, he hasn't really done much uh, lately. We know his upside, so I, he's definitely in play, and he's definitely a captain option for me, obviously. But a guy like Jamar Chase, at, at that price, I'm still interested in him. So thoughts on Jamar Chase versus T. Higgins. Can you get both? Uh, and uh, is there a guy that you're leaning to more because of the price that T. Higgins is $2,000 cheaper? So, I, I look, Jamar Chase, I'm going to try and get as much of him as I possibly can. I'm probably not going to be prioritizing him at the captain, but he's going to be damn near a walk in my flex spot. Uh, and again, because I'm already looking to potentially fade Patrick Mahomes, I'm going to have a little bit more salary. So I'm going to have we're going to have the ability to to run Joe Burrow, T. Higgins, and Jamar Chase in the same lineup. And Kelsey, maybe. Um, now, yeah, and Kelsey. Now, with that being said, like uh, I I still prefer Higgins as more of a captain play. Um, I think you can get some exposure to him in the flex, uh, but uh, he's he's a little bit more boomer bust. He's a guy who's going to go out and get 200 yards and three touchdowns. Or you know, uh, you know, maybe seven fantasy points. Which uh, at eighty four hundred, if he's going to have an elite game, you need him at the captain spot uh, on a slate like this. But Jamar Chase is that guy who's going to get you know nine target or nine receptions, yeah, uh, one hundred and twelve yards and one touchdown, pretty much every game. So yeah. you're going to get your fifteen to twenty points from Jamar Chase. So I, I I'm going to keep him locked pretty damn near in with the flex. But look, these other guys, again, like, you know, what do we always say? We should just change our slogan to, uh, 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 if, you know, if uh, Joe Burrow is throwing the ball, just take whoever, right? <laughs> yeah, so, like, Mahomes, Joe Burrow, yeah. Pat Mahomes, Josh Allen, it doesn't matter. I'm going to play Steve Irwin. I'm going to play <laughs> Tyler Boyd, right? All these guys, they're going to be in play. They're priced incorrectly for uh, the work that they're going to see. I mean, even Irwin, right? He – I think he just dropped a pass or yeah, something. He, did. he just missed something on Sunday that would have been huge for him yeah. and probably would have paid off his price tag. So, look, uh, I, I think all these guys are in play. You have one of the top five quarterbacks in the league throwing you the football. It's that simple. Jamar Chase last week had 68 snaps, 91% of the snaps. Um, T. Higgins, 76%. The week before that, T. Higgins had 90 um, So, look, all three of these guys are – going to be on the field quite a bit they're going to be together on the field all with opportunities uh when it comes to Irwin, he's about you know 25 percent of the snaps ish maybe 20 so he's a little bit of a riskier play I, instead of Irwin, i'd rather go with you know some of these other other guys on the kc side um at that price tag but all three of these 
these top end dudes are in play. I love Jamar Chase for captain and flex. T. Higgins, captain and flex. Tyler Boyd, shit, I'll get some captain Tyler Boyd. We've seen him go off in the past. Um, and he'll be super low owned. Probably not the best play. He's a third wide receiver, but you never know. You never know what, what where this defense is going to, you know, they're, they're going to go towards Jamar Chase. Maybe it leaves Tyler Boyd a little bit open. Um, all right, let's go to tight ends. Hayden Hurst, 5,200. Mitchell Wilcox, 600 bucks. So Hayden Hurst had a pretty good game last week. Had that touchdown reception wide open um, and caught caught the ball quite a few times. He was targeted quite a few times. Uh, 16 fantasy points, six targets, five receptions, and a touchdown for about about 60 yards. So what do we do with Hayden Hurst, man? He's kind of been in this you know $5,200 range where he might get forgotten about with all the weapons in this game. Yeah, man, uh, I'll have him. Uh, 5200 is on a terrible price. I think we're going to be able to get to him. Um, uh, and he seems to be pretty comfortable with uh, Joe Burrow. Uh, they he, he was getting lost on some of those plays. The defense was just losing track of him. Um, and he became kind of the safety valve for uh, uh, Joe Burrow. So I like Hayden Hurst, 5,200. I think you can play him at captain a little bit if you want. Um, I doubt he's necessarily going to have two touchdowns, but he definitely does have two touchdown upside. And uh, even, you know, uh, yeah, four receptions, 60 yards on a touchdown might be enough to be an optimal captain play to jam in some of these other high price studs that we have. Yeah, and then just real quick on Mitchell Wilcox, um, six hundred bucks. Another one of those things he could have. He, he was getting some uh, involvement last week, and uh, yeah, two targets, one reception. It's not incredible, but uh, at, at six hundred bucks, man. Like if you want to be able to play Mahomes and Burrow and all these other dudes, you got to be comfortable playing with some of these guys. And uh, I don't mind getting a little exposure to Mitch, Mitchell Wilcox. Forty-five percent of the snaps last week for Wilcox, thirty-one the week before, and forty-two the week before that. So he's he's on the field, and you know, I mean, he he does he did he has his touchdown this year. If he's on the field that much and he's six hundred bucks, I, I'm going to be interested in him for sure. Let's go to the other side. Um, Travis Kelsey is eleven hundred bucks. Noah Gray is fourteen hundred. Then you got Jody Fortson if he's active, two hundred, and Blake Bell four hundred. Um, look, Kelsey at 11K. <laughs> it's it's actually a rel- it's it's actually kind of a tough matchup for him. Um, I don't think he can be shut down. I don't care who 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 they're playing. But if you look at this, uh, if you look at this Bengals defense here, they've only allowed three touchdowns to tight ends this season. Uh, no touchdowns last week from Knox, and the la- when they played earlier this year, they didn't give up a touchdown to to Kelsey. If you look at that game. It's one of his lower outputted games here against against Cincinnati, eight fantasy points. So will that happen again? Eh, probably not. I, I I still see him, you know, getting you know probably eleven plus targets, ten plus targets, six seven receptions, a hundred yards. But the, the question here is, does he get his two? Does he get his three touchdown game? I don't think so, man. I mean, it, it could happen, but uh, I definitely want him. Um, I definitely, I would rather play him over Patrick Mahomes in this situation, but I don't think this is like a slam dunk, put him at captain. He's going to score multiple touchdowns sort of night. Do you agree? Yeah, I look, I don't know if that he's going to have the 38 points or whatever it was that he had last week. I think he's, I think you're fine for even 15 to 20. It's probably a solid projection for him. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, I, he's probably, I'm probably not going to have any lineups with him at captain. And uh, that's almost blasphemous coming from someone who likes to play the tight end yeah. captain as much as I do. But yep. uh, just the way that he's priced, I, I you know I think I'd still lean towards getting more Jamar Chase at the captain spot. Um, and uh, look, one thing to keep in mind here is the the, the Travis Kelsey Pat Mahomes stack is probably going to be the second most popular stack in the entire on the entire uh, uh, showdown, right? Yes, yes. It's Chase and Burrow, and then these two. And when we get to build, you guys see how difficult that is. But uh, so if you're playing Patrick Mahomes, then you might be okay tra- fading uh, tra- Travis Kelsey because you're already at that, and it's a pretty chalky build. So um, I think you kind of got to take a stand on one of the Kansas City guys, and uh, I r- usually don't like to do that, but these are the guys that you may need to fade. I mean, even if Travis Kelsey, we know that he's the best tight end in the world right now, but it, it still matters if Patrick Mahomes can plant his foot long enough or strong enough to even get the ball there. So, or maybe maybe Pat is throwing a little bit differently and relying on some of his raw strength and talent, and he starts missing throws that he hasn't been missing in a couple of years. Yeah. So there's there's a lot of things that can happen that could impact his overall uh, ability to to pay off 11k. But 
uh, again, like don't don't overthink it. Like if yeah. you want to fade him in a couple lineups, it's fine. If you want to play him, then fucking play him. He's Travis Kelsey. Yeah, at this point, it's like a CMC situation with Kelsey. Like even if he doesn't have his best game, you're still probably going to want to have him because his floor is so high. All right, uh, thoughts on Noah Gray? Uh, Fourteen hundred bucks. It's worth worth sprinkling him in with lineup or two, right? Yeah, I mean, look, I will I, I will have any exposure to whoever is active uh, at the tight end position, um, specifically the tight end position uh, for uh, uh, Kansas City. But that includes um, it, Noah Gray, Blake Bell, Jody Fortson, Tyson. If you were playing tight end with Patrick Mahomes, I'd probably play you and show. Oh yeah, so, I, I'd be two hundred bucks. You know, I'd be two hundred bucks too. <laughs> they no, they 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 give you an extra five k for letting you play him. <laughs> All right, um, let's go to kickers. Um, Harrison Butker, 4,200. Evan McPherson, 4K. I don't know. They're freaking kickers. Um, you had a stat earlier. <clears throat> Did you have that pulled up? Uh, what was it? It was was it the Bengals? Or, no, no, it was the Chiefs against kickers. What was that stat? No, no, no. So the Bengals, uh, they're 29th against kickers. Uh, they allow 9.3 finish points per game. Um, I don't. I, you know, take that for what it's worth, but uh, <laughs> and maybe maybe that means Butker should have a slight boost in your projections this week if you make them. And, and I feel like <clears throat> I feel like Butker, if I'm doing no Mahomes and I'm I'm doing like you know a two two man KC stack or even a three man, I'm probably want to try going to try to get Butker involved a little bit. I'm sure these guys will both be around twenty percent owned. So I'll probably want to be with the field with that in a game like this. Um, you know, they're going to take points when they can get them most likely, unless it's a blowout. So, you know, if it's fourth down on the 35-yard line and this game is tied, they're probably taking that field goal as opposed to, you know, in the regular season, maybe they're going maybe they're going for it. Um, defense, Chiefs 3,800, Bengals 3,400. Any interest in these defenses? Uh, I have to say yes, just because my final score was 17 to 13. So uh, I do think that these guys are potentially in play, but I, I do think that there's other plays that I'm more comfortable with. Instead of playing a $3,400 uh, defense, I'd rather pay $200 for Jody Fortson and then end up somewhere else with that 3K. Yeah. All right, let's get to our crown their ass segment, our favorite captain on DraftKings. Now, if you want to crown them, then crown their ass. You're going Higgins. I'm going Chase. Uh, anybody else that we want to talk about here? Uh, just real quick. I mean, I think you can get some exposure to, to Pat Mahomes and Joe Burrow, a captain even, uh, maybe run back some weird stacks. Obviously you got Travis Kelsey, but, um, you know, don't, don't be hesitant to rotate in some of those mid tier guys. Like I, I think, uh, uh, McKinnon and Pacheco are interesting and even as low as Hayden Hurst. Yeah. Agreed. And, and maybe, you know, to me, I feel like Mixon is going to be like, maybe my third highest owned captain in this game, just because I don't think his ownership is going to be there. And he still has that ceiling. He's, you know, he's not going against the 85 bears. I think he can, he can have a pretty damn good game. All right, let's go to our fade. And, you know, we've, you know, past few weeks, we've sort of mailed it in when it comes to the fades, because in a lot of, in a lot of cases, we just, we like everybody and we're going to play hundred plus lineups. I'm not going to fade anybody unless the lineup warrants it in this case we're gonna get a little bit more bolder we couldn't do diddly poo ella you're fading mckinnon i'm I, i'm i'm just i'm fading my homes man and feel free to absolutely trash me in the comments uh do this at your own risk um but that's what i'm gonna do <laughs> uh, yeah, man. good luck uh, yeah good luck exactly mckinnon um I, I totally see that man but it scares me because he's the kind of guy that can get you the two touchdowns and actually absolutely break the slate when you least expect it. But for me, I think I'm going to, I'll have probably five to 10% Mahomes at captain. And then maybe in the flex, I sort of eliminate him. Um, anybody else that you're maybe not so interested in here? Uh, uh, I guess, I guess, uh, you know, I, I can put Juju. Yeah. I was originally, yeah. Receivers in there. I was going to say Juju. I, think I like the cheaper ones. Yeah. I was going to say Juju too, but. You know, of course, this will be the game when he's when he's super low owned. This will be the game that he ap- ap- finally has a, a a standout performance. All right, let's get to our lineup build here. All right, so we appreciate you guys. If you're interested in joining that Discord, it's free. 
Uh, you can scan it down below or, or click into the into the details uh, description down below and click that join Discord. It's free. And uh, hey, if you guys don't mind throwing us a subscribe and like this video, let's get to 50 likes for this. That would be awesome. Ellie, let's just click the button and see what happens. Hey, would you look at that? Patrick Mahomes, a captain. <laughs> uh, Noah Gray, Tyler Boyd, Juju Smith-Schuster, Jamar Chase, and Burrow. Let's build our own lineup. Do you want to build a, a Patty Mahomes lineup just for shits and giggles here? Or do you want to do a cash yeah, one first? Would you play Patty at, at cash or would you play like Burrow or, or Kelsey at, in cash? I'd probably play Jamar Chase at captain in cash. Like I, I don't trust Pat Mahomes injury. It seems pretty risky. Let's do, let's build a, let's build a cash lineup with Chase. So I feel like with cash, uh, we're probably want to get, going to want to get both quarterbacks in, right? Yeah. All right. Now, where do we go from here? We've got 12 K for three positions. It's about four K each. Do we want to throw a kicker in right away? Do we want to find our, our, you know, best point per dollar play? What are we doing here? Yeah, probably throwing a kicker. I think we go with uh, Bucker. Okay. Still in pretty good shape and, here. And let's let's. I think we find our punt and then kind of see where we're at. What happens if we throw in Noah Gray? A, a lot of a lot of things happen for us. Jarek McKinnon's available. Pacheco, Juju. I mean. I feel like Pacheco, because of his floor that he's established over the past, you know, what, six, seven weeks or whatever that is, I, I really do feel like Pacheco is a pretty decent cash play. Um, especially in yeah, a game where especially in a game where Mahomes is is not gonna be very mobile. This is a tournament this is a tournament build too, obviously. Uh so as we get closer, we'll probably start messing around with cash more once I start seeing more ownership. It's kind of difficult to see, you know, and we don't have uh we don't know who's gonna be out at this point. But I think it's a pretty decent starting point here. And uh, Chase, to me, is probably not going to be, like, that optimal cash choice. But I like this lineup in a single entry, for sure. Um, all right, so what do you want to do here next? Do you want to – actually, do you want to build another another tournament lineup with with Chase here? Yeah, let's do Jamar Chase. Let's uh, let's fade Pat. Oops. Let's uh... – Okay. Burrow. Let's go. Burrow, Kelsey, and then um, let's throw Mixon. Okay. Joe Mixon. All right, we can't get Tony. We can't really we can't do a whole lot here with KC. We got 3k left. Um, let's throw in We have 3k. Can we do I mean, we're I'd say throwing Sky more, but I think that's going to leave us too much. We're still going to end up playing like Noah Gray too, huh? I feel like we got to get rid of Mixon here. Yeah, you if, want to throw in. This feels right, like let's a, go with uh, our Kansas City guy, right? Tony. Yeah, that works. All right, so Kelsey and Tony, and then we're gonna run it back with four Cincinnati guys. I think you probably want to get at least either Hayden Hurst or um, Tyler Boyd involved with this particular build. Do you, are you leaning, you know, any which direction with that? Uh, let's go with uh, let's go with Hurst. Okay. Leaves us with twenty eight hundred bucks, so that gets us Irwin. Trent Irwin. That gets you know that gets us Justin Watson if we wanted to go that that route. But I I think that's okay. But still, I mean, you're seeing with Chase at captain and Burrow and Kelsey, uh, it's still not as cut and dry as you'd think. Um, now you could go like a kicker, and you could go a kicker here instead of instead of Tony, and maybe that gets you a little bit more in that last spot, but. That doesn't feel that doesn't feel great. Don't get me wrong. It doesn't doesn't feel great. So let let's build a let's build a lineup with some with another captain and see see how much easier that is to, to do that. What do you think? Higgins? Yeah, let's throw in Higgins. All right, Burrow. And then Yeah, let's go Burrow, Chase, we'll see. Okay. Kels. All right, so fifty four hundred for two spots here. Where are we going? Uh, you want to throw in Tony? Uh, I, the, the answer to that will always be yes. Six hundred bucks. It's Wilcox. Yep. So even when we're going with these lower price captains and fading Mahomes, we're still stuck with punt, like completely punting in that last spot. 
that's how that's how tight this is. I mean, there's a lot of options as compared to the NFC showdown version of this, but this still feels pretty tight. Um, let's go somebody else here. Let's find a captain that we actually feel comfortable with here. Uh, who who else? Who else? Pacheco? You want to do Pacheco? Yeah, let's run a let's build a Pacheco in it. All right. So in this case, we're definitely fading Mahomes. I th- I feel like. Um, do you want to do like a two four, yeah. like Pacheco and and somebody and and Kelsey, and run it back with Burrow and some stacks there? Yeah, let's go. Let's go Kelsey and let's go Burrow Chase just right off the bat. We're still in pretty decent shape here, eighty four hundred. Um, probably want to get a guy. I mean, hang on a second. Yeah. 8,400. That sucks. If we were at, if we had a little bit more salary, we could just plug T Higgins in there and then punt with 200 bucks, but we can't quite do that. So we're probably looking at Tyler Boyd or Hurst here. Most likely, right? Let's go with Tyler Boyd on this one. Okay. They're right around the same salary. So you can pretty much switch them out. 3,400. Unfortunately, uh, it's not a whole lot there. You got Bengals defense, you got Steve Irwin, Justin Watson. These are better punts than we talked about for the NFC, but uh, Irwin. I mean, you see, you got Burrow, Chase, Boyd, and Irwin. I don't know, man. What if, what if instead of Chase, we went with T. Higgins? Yeah, that's fine. Let's try that, see if that's a little easier. Um, now, where do we go from here? Do we want to go back to Hayden Hurst? Yeah, you can actually do Hayden Hurst and then both kickers. Easy. Yeah, easy. It's easy. So you probably, yeah, you know, Tyler but, Boyd, Butker or tw- McPherson, you can get Boyd here too. Hey, that's not bad. Right, that's, you get, yeah, obviously you can get Tony still. Yeah, it's not bad. Pacheco to me, yeah. I mean, it, the, the odds of him being the optimal captain are so low, but I, I'm still interested in him. All right, another captain here. Let's let's find one we like here. I, I still have I still haven't found a lineup that I'm like in love with. Tony captain. Um, let's build a yeah. Let's build a, a let's do Hayden Hurst real quick and okay. then uh, drop down to Tony. Perfect. Hayden Hurst, Joe Burrow. Uh, Where are we going? You want to do Mahomes and Kelsey here and see if it, see if we can do it. Yeah, do Mahomes and Kelsey, and then uh, let's see if we can get Mixon. Hmm. No, not quite. No, not quite. Throwing Higgins, eight hundred bucks, or you, or you can go, you can go, uh, you could go. Who am I looking for here? Where the fuck's he at? Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd. Yeah. I mean, you can go Higgins, but you gotta, you gotta really punt here. Um, let's see. Tyler Boyd gets you access to a kicker. Yep. So Butker, McPherson. Yep. All right, let's build a Sky Moore one. That that seems pretty decent actually. That was that was not bad. And you could and if you fade Mahomes in that lineup, you're gonna be feeling any, even better about it because you can get you can get Jamar Chase in there too. All right, let's do Tony, and this will be our last one. All right, in this case, he's so low priced. I'm gonna I'm putting both quarterbacks in. Let's put Kelsey. Can we get Jamar? Or we can't get Jamar. Damn. No, nope, not quite. Let's pull out Mahomes. Let's put Jamar in here. So Burrow, Jamar. What do you want to do? A four-two, or you want to do a two-four here? Um, let's go two-four. I mean, we've got our two guys there. So throw in. Uh, I can throw in McPherson. Why not kicker? And then sixty-eight hundred. Probably Hayden Hurst. Well, I guess. You can pretty much throw in anybody at this point. Now, obviously, you, you can't. McKinnon. You can go McKinnon in here, but you know Pacheco, um, Juju. Juju. So you can make this a three-three, or you can go Hurst as well. If you go Hurst, then you have enough. You can come off of McPherson, get to Tyler Boyd. Yeah, like you got a lot of flexibility here. You can go to Juju. You can go to Tyler Boyd. Yeah, not bad. All right, Ellie. So what did we learn here, man? Um, coming into this, I built a, I built a little bit, obviously, before we got on the show, but this feels a little bit harder than I thought it was going to be. Um, and that's the reason why I decided, I'm like, dude, like, I got to fade somebody. Um, now, if you wanted to not get so crazy, you could just kind of be with the field across the board. 
and make sure you're going down that route and maybe do a one quarterback lineup. But to me, I don't. there's not a single lineup that I don't want Joe Burrow in. So that makes it, and, and if Joe Burrow goes off, well, guess who's probably going off? Jamar Chase, T. Higgins. I want to get those guys paired with him and that makes it impossible with Kelsey to get to get Mahomes in there. So that's kind of why I was thinking that and it sort of proved itself, but it's scary. I'm not just doing it because I hate Patrick Mahomes. I still think Patrick Mahomes can have a great game. I'm just hoping that I get lucky enough that maybe he doesn't. Anyways, what did we learn, man? What are your thoughts? Uh, look, I think it's going to be another tough building slate, but uh, I, I think that's better for us, right? Um, if it's not obvious how to build, then uh, I think everybody else is going to struggle, and that's where you have a better opportunity to, to win some money. Um, I think you just got to come up with scenarios that you think is going to happen. This is it. This is for the uh, the big game. This is for all the marbles, right? So uh, they whoever wins, wins the AFC. So if you think that they're going to come out, balls out, stop Mahomes and Kels, then think about who is going to be benefiting from that. Uh, so that's what we can do. I think this is the, the last opportunity that we're going to have to get real weird. So get crazy. Are you hand building? Or are you interested in doing, you know, hundred? like, first of all, how many lineups are you going to do? Are you sticking with like a higher dollar single entry for this one? Or are you going to go all in for GPPs, maybe a hundred plus lineups? Probably all in for GPPs. I, I, not huge on the single entry. The one the one thing. So when you ask the, the hand build versus uh, optimizer, um, I, I generally hand build the NFL just because the optimizer doesn't let you on single game showdowns. It doesn't necessarily let you set your s stacking rules without having to micromanage it being like pretty crazy. Yeah. So I prefer to just generate a shitload of lineups and then visually inspect each one to make sure I'm getting what I want. So, yeah, uh, yeah, I'll be hand building, man. I got to make sure that uh, I'm getting the right stacks. I'm thinking about doing the, that $50 or $100 single entry. That contest is, is really nice. Um, I'm going to go with like a Patrick Mahomes captain and hope that saves me with my tournament lineups and probably get 100 plus tournament lineups for this game. I'll probably do 100 for the other game and then I'll probably do 100 plus for the two gamer. So uh, if you guys are interested in, in the, seeing that two gamer, if you're watching this and this is like Friday, I'll put a link at the end of, at the end here, um, or you can click up below, uh, up top here, and uh, you can click on that two gamer if that's available and out. Um, who's your low low owned guy that you think can score? Um, I guess I gotta go with. Uh, I'm gonna go with Justin Watson, man. That's my guy. I'm thinking Tony again. I know that's. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep saying that <laughs> every freaking week. I I don't know why I love this guy. Uh, that's going to be Tony's going to be my downfall, probably. <laughs> All right, guys, we will see you for that two gamer. We appreciate it. Uh, hit us up in the discord. If you have any questions, we'll talk to you later.